Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about typing again in Python. In particular, we're going to be talking about the overload decorator and what that means and how you might go about using it. So let's jump into it. Okay, so for today, we're going to be talking about um, some standard lib functions just because they're the easiest to kind of explain how this works. Uh, so I'm going to open up an interpreter. Uh, the first one we're going to be talking about is the indexing of a bytes object. Now, a bytes object is a, you know, a, a literal like this, and it represents a series of, uh, you know, one byte integers on, uh, in a, in a list or in a sequence. So for example, if you converted foo into, you know, a list, it's an iterable of integers. And the function that we're going to be trying to represent in timing today is actually the function that is this bracket operator of, uh, of, the bytes object. So when you pass in an integer into this bracket operator, you're going to get back an individual integer because it's a, you know, an iterable of bytes. Uh, but if you pass in a slice, so this is the slice for one and onwards, uh, you'll see you get back a bytes object. So we actually get two different types here, and that's going to be important later when we try and define a function for this. Um, so let's, you know, write, write our function here. And uh, I'm just going to call it bytes get item. It's, you know, <laughs> going to be a little bit, um, you know, oversimplified here. Um, but we're going to take in a bytes object and we're going to take in the index of this. And the index here can actually be two different types. So from typing import union, it can be either a integer. Technically, it can be a indexable object, but we're going to we're going to ignore that for the sake of this. So pretend it can only be an integer for this case here. You can also pass in other objects that can be, you know, int intifiable kind of. Like you can't pass in a float. That doesn't work. Um, but, you know, there there are other things which have, I think, let's see. Dev index self return to uh, foo. Yeah, so the, you, you can have a class which defines double index. We're not going to cover that on this case, uh, but you can do that. And the other type that can go in here is a slice, and that's what this you know syntax is. This actually turns into slice uh, one, none, none. Um, you can see if we access it with, with that slice object, uh, we'll get this back out. So this is kind of a little syntax sugar for this behind the scenes. Uh, but anyway, our bytes get item can take takes our bytes object and it takes either an integer or a slice or an interval, but we're not going to cover that here. And uh, naively, if I was just writing this without having access to overload, this would return. Oh, that's off screen. Okay. <laughs> this would return union of either integer for the case where we're just receiving an in, uh, a single item, uh, or it's going to return another bytes object. And in our case, the definition of this is is simple or is trivial because we're just wrapping this other function. Um, but you might imagine this code looking like, you know, if is instance idx int, you know, return something, otherwise return something else. You could imagine it looking kind of like that. Um, but you know, we're we're cheating a little bit here, and we're just wrapping this function. Now, unfortunately, if you were to you know, write the function like this and then use it, you would run into a bunch of usability issues because of this union. Because you don't, uh, you know, the type checker doesn't actually know which of these union types you would have. So if you were to have like, you know, foo equals our bytes object, foo, and then we did, you know, print bytes, get item, um, you know, foo. Actually, let's make it a, let's make it a number and then I'll show you kind of a cool trick. Uh, bytes get item zero uh, minus the word of zero. Uh, so this will give us back, you know, the number one out of this this one sequence here. And you'll see if we run this, Python 3 TFI, it succeeds and we get, you know, the number one out. Uh, the problem is if we went to type check this, vm, vm vim activate, pip install mypy, and then run mypy on t.py, you'll see that mypy doesn't know how to deal with this on line 22. It doesn't know, you know, unsupported operand for type bytes and int. 
And the reason that it's saying bytes and int is because we have this union here. Now, of course, you can get around this by casting or other ways. Um, I actually did another video on that, so I'll, I'll link that in the description as well. Um, but we don't want to use casting here because we, we know that when we pass an integer in here, we should always get an integer out. And that's where overload comes into play. I'm typing import overload. And what overload allows you to do is it allows you to pick different type signatures and tell, you know, tell MyPy that this function actually has two different shapes. Um, it doesn't actually do anything at runtime, but it is a, a way to indicate to the type checker. And the way you would do that is by using the overload decorator, overload, and you're gonna define each of your different type signatures. So in one case, we have IDX, which is an integer, and when it's an integer, we return an integer. And the body of your overload function can actually be anything. Um, the most common case that I've seen is just to give it an ellipsis. I did a video on ellipsis also. I will link that in the description as well. And uh, the other convention is to just butt all these functions together. Um, you can separate them if you want to, but I, I don't know. I find that this reads reasonably well. Um, but, and our other flavor of this function here is when index is a slice, and that slice returns a bytes object. So these are the two you know, shapes of this type. Um, and finally, you have the implementation underneath. You're, we can just leave this alone. This is, this is the correct way to do this. And so now when we run MyPy on this, MyPy knows that this is an integer type and not a bytes type, so it can handle this properly. Um, another, you know, a couple of functions that are standard, standard library functions that have this are the div mod function, uh, which takes in, you know, um, you know, t and t and returns t, uh, tuple t, t, t. Uh, now this t can be either integer or float, and that's what it supports here. And so you can see like, you know, you would have two overloads, one for integer, integer, and one for float, float. And that would allow you to have different types there. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of cases where you might want to do overloads like this. Um, I actually found very few in my code, mostly because I, I tend to not like to deal with unions, so I, I would probably write maybe two different functions to handle something like this. Um, but if you have one function that handles both, then overload is what you would want to do there. Um, what else? Is there anything else I want to cover? Nope, I think that is it. Uh, but anyway, if you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.